Good afternoon, Miss Hattie. How you doing? You're on mute. Well, it'll be a second. We're just waiting on um, the other candidate. I mean, we, okay. She's coming on now. So hold on just one second. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay, everyone is here. President Clark, if you're ready, we're ready to begin. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Madam Nominating Chair. And uh, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. And, uh, and welcome uh, to uh, the third vice president's forum uh, tonight. Uh, we're slowly but surely moving through uh, the forums for the candidates. Uh, tonight, you'll get a glimpse into uh, our two candidates. Uh, both are well qualified to uh, hold a position of third vice president, and uh, and I'm looking forward to hearing what um, each one of them have to say regarding their platform. So, again, on behalf of the board of directors of the FAMU National Alumni Association, I bring you greetings. Thank you. Thank you, President Clark. Um, tonight, again, this is the office for our candidates for third vice president. Um, those that have been here every weekend with us since the end of February, welcome back. Um, they are all ready. So we have two candidates for the office of third vice president. So let me describe those duties for you so you can understand and the qualifications for this office. Qualifications are an active dues paying alumni member of the association, the current year and one of the past two years, attended and registered at least one type of each national meeting within the past three years, working knowledge of Robert's Rules of Order, parliamentary procedures, the association's constitution and bylaws and policies and procedures for the association be a strong follower, willing to take orders and produce, a team player, committed to serve until the term expires, supporter of the university and the association, willing to perform presidential duties in the absence of the president, first vice president, and the second vice president. Their duties include presiding at national meetings, in the absence of the president, first and second vice presidents, chairs executive board meetings in the absence of the president, first and second vice presidents, and serves as a member of the reunion committee, and of course, the all important fundraising committee. So fundraising has been a big topic in our last, um, in our previous, candidate forums. So of course, since this is one of the main functions, it will also be a hot topic. The candidates in order by last name are Hattie Alexander. Candidate Alexander, please wave your hand. And we also have Angela Freeman. Candidate Freeman, please wave. All righty, so you now see our two candidates, you will hear from them. And at this time, I am going to introduce our moderator for this evening. Our moderator is Devron M. Givens. He is the CEO, Executive Director of Revenue Based Finance Coalition. Previously, he was Senior Vice President of Public Affairs and Business Development at Amstock Corporation. He is my homeboy. 
a native of St. Petersburg. And after trying two PWIs, he had always wanted to be a Rattler following in my footsteps. So he received his Juris Doctorate from the Florida a and College of Law in 2017. And then he came back again because one time wasn't enough. He actually earned his Master's of Business Administration in 2020. Um, so he is a Rattler um, by association and by money. And he does fervently support our university. So Mr. Gibbons, I am going to now turn it over to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I'm so excited to be a part of this and I'm looking forward to uh, moderating this event this evening. Um, welcome. Um, the ground rules for this evening have been reviewed in advance by our candidates. Each candidate will have one minute and 30 seconds for an opening statement um, to provide in insight about who they are. Um, the candidates may choose not to use the entire one minute and 30 seconds. That's fine. The timekeeper will hold up a sign on their screen with 30 seconds uh, left and then a stop sign for uh, when it's appropriate for them to stop. After statements have been made, questions for the candidates will be taken from the ones that were submitted uh, online. At the end of the question period, candidates will be able to take or to make a one minute brief closing statement. Um, I, depending on the question and whether the candidates have something further they wanna say, I'll ask each candidate, since we only have a few questions, I may ask each candidate if they'd like to have a brief rebuttal at the end of each one of the questions. Um, you, the candidates may or may not use the full one minute in their closing, that's up to you. Each candidate may choose to use the full minute or not to use the full minute. But before we get started in the official um, questions and the one minute remarks, I'm gonna go on order. Candidate Alexander, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself that is not about something that's not in your opening remarks. Okay, um, my name is Hattie. Thank you, Mr. D and um, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Benita and Mrs. Joy and President Clark. I'm Hattie Alexander. Uh, I'm married to Emin Alexander. I'm from the School of Pharmacy. He's the School of Engineering. Uh, together we have four children, all of whom are graduates of the Florida a &M University. I grew up in a small place, two caution lights. Um, I'm the first black pharmacist and now we have pharmacists coming out of the woodworks in Madison County, which is the poorest economic county in the state of Florida. Um, I think my, um, when I look back on, I have many awards, but the three that comes to mind, the Florida Senate presented us with a plaque. We had to go up there one day. We got family of the year for overcoming life's obstacles. Also, um, I have one from, the, I'm on the School of Pharmacy Gallery of Distinction wall. If you walk in the School of Pharmacy, look to your left. That's the highest award awarded to the graduates from the School of Pharmacy. And it, uh, it reads, Gallery of Distinction for Exemplary exemplary professionalism, unselfish giving and improvement of the circumstances of others. And when I was employed by my company, well, which I still am on call, got the highest award from Winn-Dixie. That was the Founders Day Award for outstanding commitment to the, um, to the community, okay? And also I got one um, from the FTP NEA, and for those of you who are in education, that was the Human Relations Award. We had to do a five minute speech before 3000. So other than that, um, I will continue the fight and continue giving to my alma mater. I was recruited by Harvard 1969, but praise God, and I thank God to this day that he made it possible for me to go to Florida a and University. Thank you. Thank you so much. Candidate Freeman, why don't you take just a minute or so and tell us about yourself? And again, this is not 
your opening statement. Well, I think I bring you greetings on this beautiful first day of spring and Women's History Month. Um, my name is Angela Trinace Freeman. I am a native of Atlanta, Georgia, lived in Chicago, Illinois for 18 years, and I currently reside eight years in the bold city of Jacksonville, Florida. I'm the only daughter of Deacon James and Doris W. Freeman, Jr., and I'm surrounded by four strong brothers, Anthony James, which we call James Fruit, Antonio, and my late brother, Jamin Freeman. And also I have a sister in love, my sister-in-law, her name is Joanne Freeman, not to mention my adopted spoiled little brother, Brian Pitts. To my supporter and the love of my life, Mr. Jimmy Montgomery, he makes my world even happier each day. I also have an adopted son. He is a family graduate class of uh, 2017. His name is Jamari A. Ryan from Chicago, Illinois. I have four beautiful godchildren, Sherelle, Marcellus, Chloe, and Princess at seven years old. And that's just the icing on the cake. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will now move to the formal portion of, of the candidate forum. And now, Ms. Alexander, candidate Alexander, would you please give us your one minute and 30 second opening remarks? Hey, my um, opening statement or remarks is that um, I became interested in the fundraising uh, of Florida a &M University many, many years ago. As a matter of fact, I, I looked for it, but I couldn't find it. But actually, in 1990, when we had VP um, uh, Leo Sams during the Humphreys administration, we had gotten a call from Tallahassee, and um, we were asked if we would co-sponsor a fundraising venue for Florida Indian University. So we were able to, um, Emily and I were the co-sponsors, and I can't think of the other ones. Uh, there was another couple. And we were able to negotiate with uh, Bell South, who he was employed with for 42 years, um, a banquet. And Bell South paid for everything. They underwrote the whole banquet. And they also um, had a policy in place that they did a match for every $1 that was given, they matched with $2. Okay. And I, that was the beginning of what we call our major fundraising, okay? And also, um, uh, even recently, Gautier called last year and he called the other day. He would like for us to co-sponsor his, uh, the first, the second, would be the second annual RAF fundraising too. Thank you. Candidate Freeman, you can now start your one minute and 30 opening remarks. Yes, from the Atlanta area, from ATL to the highest of seven years, I'm the incoming freshman of class of 1986. My Rattler journey started then. I'm a proud member of the marching, FAMU Marching 100 alumni band, spring 1991 FAMU graduate with a bachelor of science degree in office administration and minor in business economics, which matriculated me to the left, which is next door to the Florida State University to pursue my MBA MHA degree, which that program was cut due to the low enrollment. Rhodes led me on to Roosevelt University in Chicago Law, which I earned my master's of business administration with concentration in information system. I immediately joined the Windy City chapter there, which in that chapter, I served in various capacity. My roles to, um, in FAMU continued to grow, which I was led to be the fundraising chair. We raised over $250,000. Scholarship committee served as a treasurer, recording secretary, and fundraising chairperson, which eight years, um, uh, 17 years totally in Chicago, led me eight years to uh, Jacksonville, Florida, which I served as the immediate past president in that capacity for almost five years. During my tenure as president, I spearheaded our chapter five-star gala, which we raised over $80,000 in 2019. I'm a distinguished alumni award recipient in technology of 2018. 
2017, along with I have been um, chapter president for 2017 and 2018. Thank you. Wow, I see why we are having this this forum. You both are very accomplished rattlers, and you should be uh, very proud of all the accomplishments that you have had. So now we'll move to the questions that the alumni have submitted. Candidates will be limited to, <clears throat> to answers not to exceed one minute. So look out for the timekeeper. You both have done an excellent job with regard to that. So thank you for that. Um, if a candidate wishes to follow up, um, I will, because we don't have that many questions, allow a one minute follow up um, after each question, if you would like. You don't have to utilize that time, but if you would like, I'll give you one extra minute after the other candidate has spoken to follow up. The first question is, what is your vision for the National Alumni Association? Candidate Freeman will start in answering this question. Yes, I'm so glad you asked that vision. My vision is really simply, um, I am my platform points basically center around um, integrity, pride, leadership. And I, my vision is to continue the roads to lead us in the direction to the next level. For an example, um, homecoming. Um, we have an average of 60,000 um, people come back to homecoming, 30,000 alumni. And, you know, I have a vision that with over 90,000 graduates, we need to raise funds at convocation day parties, all events. Why not? Everybody can participate. Yes, all alumni can join us. My vision is to have 100 plus members to solicit everyone to join with a swipe your favorite card, yes, pull out those credit cards, pull out those debit cards and pay those dues. We must catch them where they are. So that is one big feat from Ambitious Angela. That is my campaign slogan, it's a big feat, but it can be done because everyone is enjoying themselves, they're eating, they're drinking and they're shopping. So let's get those dues. As my grandmother, my late grandmother would say, Johnny on the spot, catch them where they are. So that is my vision for the FAMU National Alumni Association, how we can actually take this to the next level and get more members to join. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you candidate Freeman, candidate Alexander. What is your vision for the National Alumni Association? Thank you. My vision uh, is fundraising focus through increasing revenue, increasing percentage of alumni giving, and increasing our rankings. And I, my main focus would be um, increasing our membership, okay, and increasing our student recruitment. Um, for, let's just say, for example, if we had 5,000 uh, members, I did the math, that's $250,000. 20,000, that's a million. 30,000, that's 1,500. I also uh, would be focused on um, building relationships through networking, collaboration, engagement with prospective donors. To give you a perfect example, this past Monday, a gentleman called, and after my, me and my husband were on the phone with him 10 minutes, <coughs> brings him into the foundation, just with 10 minutes, he committed $100,000, okay? Um, and then let's not forget to start at home by engaging our family and our friends and uh, our friends' friends. Uh, we started an endowment, uh, what was it? We said 10 years, but eight years, we were at $95,000. We intend to close that out. Uh, the other thing is a lot of, of our alumni and friends work for companies, a whole lot of companies. They match one for one. A lot of our alumni, including my daughter, didn't even know till I told her about it. That's just free money. Uh, I'm strongly committed to the students. If a student, our phone and our cell, we're open 24 seven. I'm committed to the faculty because after all, a lot of our faculty members bring in millions of dollars in grants. And I'm also committed to the stakeholders. A lot of them give time, treasury, and talent. And all of them need to be treated with respect. Thank you. And everybody has value. Thank you. 
Yes, ma'am. Now, both of you went over last time, so please pay attention to our timekeeper. I let both of you go because I want to be fair and equitable in the amount of time that each person gets. Okay. If there's any follow-up that each one of you would like to talk about on your vision, I'll give each of you about 30 seconds right now to do that. Is that, does anybody want to follow up on that? I'm good. You good? I'm okay. good. So we're going to move to question two, and thank you all. What is your plan to improve scholarship program facilitated by the National Alumni Association, especially how recipients are selected by the scholarship to committee? Ms. Alexander, you will have the first bite at answering that question. Uh, thank you. That's a million dollar question. That's worth a million dollars. Uh, the first thing I would do upon being elected, I would asked to participate with the recruitment and a scholarship committee. And we would, through teamwork, okay, we would streamline the process of processing and receiving those applications. We would utilize technology to receive the applications. We would create a rubric or matrix regarding the applicants and the responses, okay? And we would, um, meet with the foundation and the financial aid office. And finally, uh, we would submit those applications to the proper uh, entities and those arubas, would, some would be lead-based and some would be merit-based. And the most important, we will follow up to ensure that the students have been provided their funds in a timely manner. Thank you. Candidate Friedman? What is your plan to improve the scholarship program facilitated by the National Alumni Association, especially how recipients are selected by the scholarship committee? I'm glad you asked that question. My vision is to partner up with the second vice president that's over the student recruitment. And we will actually uh, actually streamline to at the local level for the 98 chapters of their scholarship and recruitment chairs and their committee to make sure that a timeline is submitted, a rubric, making sure everything is above board for the selection process. In addition to that, we will hold several workshops. So those individual local chapters would know the process between financial aid, between the foundation office and the forms. It's all in the documentation and everything has to be streamlined. So with those three uh, categories, everyone will be on the same page and there will be some structure to the program. Thank you. Thank you both. We'll move right on to question three from the alumni. And answering this question first will be Ms. Freeman. What is your plan to improve the process to alleviate stress of students not getting their funds until the middle to end of the semester? Candidate Freeman. I'm glad you asked that question because currently in Jacksonville, we deal with that all the time as a media past president for almost five years. I have worked in the trenches with these students, actually from the veal to the heel. Yes, we have over 580 students that have been recruited from Jacksonville that's on the hill now. So I'm up and close and personal with those students. We have started working with these students, ninth and 10th grade to prepare them. So we want to make sure they're successful. We will actually work with them hand in hand. Like I said, Fort mentioned the scholarship and recruitment, which the second vice president is over membership uh, re recruitment, making sure all documentation is valid, all signatures and making sure they have their money on time and successful so they won't have those late fees to deal with. Thank you. Candidate Alexander, what is your plan to improve the process to alleviate the stress of students not getting their funds until the middle or end of the semester? Thank you, sir. And I reviewed the bylaws and in those bylaws, it stated recruitment and scholarship um, committee and also finance committee. I think these are the key elements. And then you add in 
the foundation and the financial aid uh, office and together a team, I believe in being a team player, we should be able to iron out those uh, differences. And to be honest with you, just Wednesday, well, I had, it was a, um, um, a financial entity to the foundation. I had submitted $5,000 in December as a Wednesday, they couldn't find the 5,000. So I had to backtrack. So I think right here to make those students get that money to make sure that it happens is the follow up processes and procedures in combination with recruitment, scholarship and finance committee and foundation and financial aid office. Thank you. Thank you both. You both answered that question. And any, do you, either one of you, this is a big issue. Uh, Ms. Davies told you in the beginning that I always wanted to be a Rattler. I did go to University of Florida in undergrad and I was on the Hill more than I was in Gainesville. So I used to listen to all my friends tell me they didn't get their financial aid until the, almost the end of the semester. So this has been an ongoing issue for a very long time. So I'll give each of you an extra minute if you wanna add anything to that, because I believe that's one of, that is really a, a, a critical question. Um, that needs to be figured out and answered because students are currently still dealing with some of that. Uh, why don't we start? I think Ms. Freeman, you started answering the question first. So why don't we let Ms. Alexander do the one minute rebut uh, first? Yes, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it's still back to that recruitment, scholarship, and finance committee, and the foundation and the financial aid office, and with technology. We should have someone with a specific job that would just punch in a button. We can track those monies because right now, like I said, I'm it's three months and the foundation lost my money that came, you know, from a financial institution. I could just imagine, you know, about a student. So if we had those individuals from those uh, committees I just named and those schools, our technology person. And then that scholarship committee, with all due respect, when I read through it, it's, there's supposed to be a representative from each uh, region or they can appoint one. And we have to make those um, regional appointees workable and working for the students. Thank you, I yield. Ms. Freeman? Yes, I, I wanted to also mention too, I don't know if the panel or the listening audience know, but there's there, there's a new rule that's called cost of attendance. That is a huge uh, change in the, the game, basically. For example, if a student has been awarded, say for instance, $25,000 and their cost of attendance is only $15,000, that extra $5,000 the student would not receive. So those are new rules. I think we need to implement these workshops so these students will know, the parents will know how everything works because a lot of those funds today, a lot of students have been waiting and they're not gonna receive those funds. The funds will go back to the source. So I yield my time, thank you. You both did an excellent job with that question. And financial aid and monies is always a critical issue for students attending um, colleges and universities. So I'm gonna move to question four, which is our final question. And Ms. Alexander, you will start by answering this question. What has had the greatest impact on the National Alumni Association ability to support FAMU? I would have, thank you, sir. I would have to say that uh, recruitment of uh, alumni and membership and uh, recruitment of students and financial aid. Um, uh, let's take for instance, the SOS fund. Um, and that was spearheaded. That idea came from our um, third VP, which was, is Mary Williams as of now. She and her team, uh, that team, her and her team and the rest of us has raised over $700,000. And so here again, we, if we increase the, the membership, the alumni membership, engagement, collaboration, and um, make that financial aid accountable, you know, uh, then we can increase 
our SOS funding, thereby increasing the students that graduate and we'll open the doors for new incoming students. So this would increase our enrollment. So um, uh, membership recruitment, thank you. Candidate Freeman, yeah. what had the greatest impact on FAMU, on, I'm sorry, impact on the National Alumni Association's ability to support FAMU? I'm glad you asked that question. There's there are several things that's a greatest impact, but the one that stands out is the SOS saving our students. Um, that has afforded a lot of students who have had some issues at the end to get across that stage. But one important thing that I would be creative and think outside of the box, which is what I do in innovation as a technologist, um, I would like to institute invite other fellow HBCU alumni around the world to join the FAMU National Alumni Association. And we can set it up, go to social media, we can do our TikTok and have a TikTok account, a dance-a-thon to join the party. We could challenge all the HBCUs with the leaderboard to see how many new alumni can join the ranks. That would be fun. It would be a big hit a big fat Rattler fun time. And in addition to that, we could raise fun, fundraising, and just pay, pay it for and as many shares and likes and repos. It's simple math. Let's go Rattlers. We could do it, um, you know, Rattler style. And those other HBCUs definitely would, would, thank you. Thank you both for uh, paying attention to our timekeeper. Um, we are now moved to the one minute um, closing uh, remarks. But because we are so far ahead of the schedule, I'll move timekeeper that we give each candidate one minute and 30 seconds for a closing remark instead of the one minute. Um, and so we will go in the reverse order that we started. If I'm not mistaken, candidate Alexander went first on the opening remarks. And so we'll go in the reverse order um, in closing remarks. So candidate Freeman, you are now starting your one minute and 30 second closing remarks. So you may begin. Thank you. In closing, I invite you to everyone to look at my experiences, my accomplishments, and there is a number of accomplishments, uh, Trailblazer Award 2017, Citizen of the Year that was awarded by Mega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated 2017. I'm a life member of FAMU National Alumni Association. I've helped uh, matriculate 580 students from the Veal to the Hill through, from my mentorship program, bridging that gap between the newly established alumni and for those more seasoned alumni. But I really truly expressly from my heartfelt desire is to serve your next third vice president. And on afterwards, you cast your vote to vote for Angela T. Freeman, knowing that I would come ready to implement all ideas and to get the job done. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Alexander, you have a minute and 30 seconds for your closing remarks. Uh, thank you. Uh, my closing remarks, thank Hattie, honesty, advocacy, trustworthy, transparent, integrity, and excellent. Uh, Senator Liu said in his wise statement, no man can separate uh, what he does from who he is. And when I read through the bylaws, the bio, if we just follow those bylaws and in addition to that, go the extra step, uh, I consider myself a professional and a practice and practical. And so we have a theory and then we have um, what works. And so the other thing point would be, let's build relationships, let's collaborate. Um, and all of us, I feel, are committed to FAMU's growth and prosperity. I appreciate your vote, your friends and your family and others vote. Thank you. Thank you both. This uh, concludes the moderated portion of the, of the uh, candidate forum, but let me just close by saying this before I turn it back over to our timekeeper and President Clark. Um, again, I did always wanna be a Rattler. 
Um, I went from the University of Florida, University of South Florida. I even attended Harvard University. But when I got to FAMU, I found a family. And that is why I'm so happy to be moderating this for you all. But I see why FAMU is the best of the HBCUs. It's because of people like yourselves who want to be third vice president. We have the highest quality candidates in both of you. And I wish you both good luck. So I'll turn it back over, I think, to Ms. Davies to move the agenda forward. And thank you all for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gibbons. Um, I, I wanted you to see this part of FAMU because you're always in the trenches seeing it from the legislative side. So I wanted you to be up close and personal um, to see how it works from the NAA side. So um, thank you again for a heeding to my call yeah. <laughs> and making your schedule available for me. Go ahead. Ms. Davies is being nice. She only calls me to get something from the legislature for FAMU or for money. <laughs> and I'm happy to take it. Oh, so it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> I love you too. Okay. Thank you again, candidate Hattie Alexander and candidate Angela Freeman. Um, you should have received instructions about the election process. So make sure if you are a financial member, you read your emails and follow those um, guidelines that have been given. Uh, we will have our recording and find, uh, no, recording and corresponding secretary next week. And then we will end with our financial secretary and treasurer. Again, all of those dates have been sent out via your email from our corresponding secretary. President Clark, I will now turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, everybody, thank you. Uh, best wishes, great candidates form. Uh, again, both candidates are highly qualified uh, for this position. And uh, I was happy to hear what their ideas were tonight. So I would say to everybody that's listening to this, uh, engage uh, these candidates, uh, dig in, find out a little bit more about them because uh, April the 5th, uh, ballots will start going out. So uh, get yourself ready so you can cash your vote for the next leadership of this FAMU National Alumni Association. Again, uh, Chair Davies and to the committee, I see Dr. Williams and, and uh, President Benita Williams on uh, as a part of this committee. Thank you all for all y'all do support this great institution and our moderator thank you so much and by the power invested in me you are a rapper so uh keep doing what you're doing and uh come on and, and support us and 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 i'm sure they didn't got you in one of these chapters around here you can also become a life member uh, as well <laughs> and make it official all I'm right not, i think joy already got me on the life member thing okay <laughs> okay <laughs> not a problem all right. Well, we're going to keep you engaged. And thank you so much for all you do. Everybody have a good evening. Go Rattlers. Thank you. God bless. God bless you.